Manchester University's 2012 tuition fee leaked to national newspaper. Arab journalist calls on Britain to intervene in Bahrain protest turmoil. Never shoot again at peaceful demonstrators. A former resident of Winchester wins an Oscar. And in sport, a six-goal thriller as Winchester University looked to make history. Good afternoon and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Andrew Giddings. Winchester students could pay £7,500 a year in tuition fees from 2012. The university has refused to confirm or deny the report in the Times on Monday. Kieran Brannigan has been gauging the reaction on campus. It has been reported by a national newspaper that the University of Winchester could charge over £7,000 for tuition fees, a substantial rise from the current amount. The figure falls short of the £9,000 that could be charged under controversial new government plans. Currently, Winchester students could leave with debts of around £25,000. This amount includes loans for tuition fees as well as the full maintenance loan. Under plans for students starting in 2012, fees of 7,500 could be charged. This means the total amount of debt could rise to almost 40,000 pounds. Would it be too much to pay to come to university where you could look to do something else like get an apprenticeship where it'd be cheaper and you're actually learning the skills like day to day instead of actually paying to learn and then coming out with the debt? In the long run, even though the fees are quite high, I mean the university itself is quite good so hopefully the quality of degree that I would get would like, help me get a job in the long run. When we spoke to the university in an attempt to verify these claims, they declined to comment. Kieran Brannigan, Winchester News Online. Now, we have all been watching the dramatic events unfolding in the Arab world. A Winchester student is increasingly concerned for his father, who has been caught up in the political unrest in Bahrain. These pictures are of the unprecedented protests that took place in the Gulf Kingdom. Back in Winchester, Ali Al Jamri has been watching developments closely. First year student Ali Al Jamri came to Winchester from Bahrain, where his father still works as a journalist. Talk to him quite often, usually about the protests going on in Bahrain. He's um, always really busy. We spoke to Ali's father on a special link to the Gulf Kingdom, where he said things were tense but not too violent following the protests at Pearl Roundabout. There are, there are hundreds of tents, small and big, scattered all around the roundabout. You could enter any of the tents and start up a dialogue. Bahrain has close political and economic ties to the UK. Mr Al Jamri told Winner what he wanted the UK government to do. To ensure that the military, military and security forces will never shoot again at peaceful demonstrators, to help investigate what happened, since the 14th and to bring those people responsible to punishment. But for now, Ali will have to watch the news and hope for the best out in Bahrain. Hannah Keegan for Winchester News Online. A Southampton woman appeared in Winchester Crown Court today, charged with the murder of her mother-in-law. 35-year-old Raj Bindakawa was remanded in custody. A post-mortem examination found that Baljeet Kaur Batar had died from repeated blows to the head. Paramedics were called to the house on Broadlands Road but she died before she arrived at hospital. Police arrested three other people on suspicion of the murder. Two of them were released without charge on Saturday. She will reappear in court on the 6th of May. In other news, a local policeman was mown down by a driver in the middle of the night outside Southampton nightclub Flares on Sunday. The officer was thrown into the air before landing on the bonnet of the dark-coloured hatchback, which then drove away at speed. The car was later found dumped near a roundabout in the city centre. Police are appealing for witnesses. Now, pubs are often the heart of a community, but defiant residents in Stanmore, in Winchester, have been fighting to keep their last local open. Sam Homewood reports. This is the last pub in Stanmore. Its owners, Enterprise Inns, have started negotiations about selling the land. If it's sold, it's likely that it will be turned into new homes. Local residents have started a petition to keep their pub open. Prospective city councillor Dave Sumption is desperate to keep the pub in business. And we've set up a petition and we've so far got Seven, 750 signatures on that petition to save it. Um, it's the last um, bastion, if you like, <laughs> of, of English way of life. There would be nothing on the, the estate for your average working man. The students which live on here, we've got 850 students nearly, and it's just the watering hole for the majority of them. 
In an exclusive statement to Winnell, Enterprise Inn said, We are in negotiations to dispose of the site. Bargate Homes have confirmed their intention to build new homes and a community facility. Residents of Stanmore shared their views. I don't think Stanmore needs any more houses, but we could do another pub. It's already too populated as it is. In a few weeks, Mr Sumption will hand over his petition. By then, he hopes to have a 1,000 signatures, which he hopes will stop Enterprise Inns calling time on the new Queen's Head. Sam Homewood, Winchester News Online. Hampshire County Hospital says more lives can be saved by their new piece of equipment. As David Champion reports, it was donated by a former patient. Breast cancer kills 12,000 people each year in the UK alone. But the Royal Hampshire County Hospital in Winchester is leading the fight against the disease with top specialists and new industry-leading equipment. We were given a charitable donation to buy some equipment and what that means is it's called OSMO, which is One Step Nucleic Acid Amplification. It was from a lady who herself had had breast cancer. There are ten other sites who have the OSNA equipment. The intraoperative radiotherapy, there are five sites across the country, but we are the only site in the country who can do both at the same time. So at the same time as all this is happening with the OSNA, it, the lady can have the uh, site of the breast cancer, the, the radiotherapy topically applied to the breast cancer at the same time. She can also then have the reconstructive surgery all in one operation, and it, it puts Winchester up there in the forefront of, of, of breast treatment. David Champion, Winchester News Online. And now it's time to go to Karen Purnell for all of this week's sport. Karen. Thanks, Andrew. After winning the Bucks Cup last year, Winchester University men's football went into this year's quarter-final on the brink of setting a new league record. Mikey Smith saw the action. Winchester first took on Team Bath seconds on Monday night, with Winchester looking to break the record for the most consecutive Bucks Cup victories. Oh, it's massive. We got uh, told it's one of their biggest games ever. Obviously, if we win, it's a national record, so we've got to win, but it's against the teams above us and the league above us. They're doing well in their league as well. Unfortunately, we're, we're not doing too well this season, so uh, it's going to be a hard game. And Winchester must have been expecting the worst when Bath grabbed a goal against the run of play midway through the first half. Just after the hour mark, Winchester brought on Lewis Clarkson and Gary Crook to try and give the team more whip. And it didn't take long for the duo to make an impact. Veteran wide player Crook gratefully tucking away Clarkson's low cross with just 12 minutes left on the clock. The Bath number nine appeared to have broken Winchester hearts and sent his side into the semis despite the heroics of Stephen Phillips in the Winchester goal. But the underdogs clearly hadn't read the script and pegged back the away side once again. Clarkson neatly securing his fourth goal of the season from the tightest of angles. The game was destined for extra time after a riveting 90 minutes of football. And Winchester started extra time in superb fashion, with Clarkson once again grabbing the limelight with that superbly weighted shot. The history student completed his hat-trick after being teed up by Knight as Winchester doubled their lead. At the final whistle, Clarkson was mobbed by his teammates and the excitement of the team was there for all to see in the post-match interview. First of all, Lewis, well done. You're our winner sportsman of the match. Scored a hat-trick. How does it feel? Yeah, unbelievable, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Drilled him to us from day one that we need to win this. Well, not win it. <laughs> so Winchester reached the semis, breaking the Bucks' record in the process. Mikey Smith for Winchester News Online. Basingstoke Town were threatened with falling into the relegation places after a poor run of form. Gareth Messenger went to see if they could stop the rot away to Staines Town. Having lost their last four matches, Basingstoke were looking to put an end to their poor form away to Staines Town. The Dragons started brightly and top goal scorer Greg Draper broke the offside trap to give Frank Gray's side an early advantage. And he's lobbed Louis Wells and Basingstoke take the lead. But Staines hit back and a clumsy challenge by Callum Reynolds gave the home side a penalty which Dwayne Lee converted, his first goal for the Swans. Lee steps up to the level of the game. And he sent Morris the wrong way, fantastic penalty from the big man. Lee almost doubled his tally with a powerful free kick, but Che Morris was more than equal to it. 
Basingstoke came close to stealing the points in second half injury time with Matt Warner's set piece, but they returned to Hampshire with a point, ending their losing streak. Gareth Messenger, Winchester News Online. And in another result from last night, Basingstoke Town failed to build on their promising point away to Staines as they went 1-0 down away to mid-table Dartford. And here's how it's affected the Blue Square South table. Basingstoke moved down two places with that defeat. They are still 10 points off the relegation places. But sides below them have games in hand. Eastley fell further behind the playoff pack as their game was called off on Monday night. The Spitfires lay four points off fifth place Welling, but they have two games in hand. That's all your sport from me. Back to Andrew. Thanks, Karen. And finally, Hampshire-born actor Colin Firth celebrated his first Oscar for Best Actor on Sunday. He received the gong for performance as the stunning mo stuttering monarch <laughs> King George VI in The King's Speech. The former Barton Peveril College student thanked his mum in his acceptance speech. And that's all for this week, but for more award-winning news and sport, don't forget to log in to our website at www.winnell.co.uk. But from all of us here at Winchester News Online, goodbye. <laughs>